So y'all ready? I hope y'all are ready, because I wasn't there. I'm uh, ready. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> I forgot to start the uh, recording there. Whoopsies. Uh, well, I no. did start the recording, but I didn't have the audio on. Yeah. So pretty much Luckily, a recap. I looked over and caught it. And I was yeah, like, thank you. Thank you for that, far. Nick. Yeah, here. heads up on that, Nick. Thank you. you so my... for everyone out there wondering what was said in the whole session, it was pretty much, hey, Chad, you noticed there was another character in the intro, and you were like, yes. yeah. And me and Nick were just like, hey, which one's next? We looked, and Nick was just like, yes. And pretty much that's where we're at right now. Yeah. yeah. We didn't start the episode. We didn't do anything like that. We don't just, pick favorite characters. Yeah, if you have to, faves. it's obviously Spike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you were saying Spike's a badass, and then we realized the audio wasn't rolling. Whoopsies. Yeah. So, anyway, um, yeah. So this is uh, episode nine, Jamming with Edward. So, I, you know Scissor what? hands. Jamming with that guy. That would right? be dangerous to jam with. Could you imagine yeah. a mosh pit with Edward, Edward scissor hands? Everybody would be fucking dead. Yeah, I think I'd be moving the Actually, hell I could see him like pit. being like an extra percussionist for Slipknot. Oh, come I'd on. I'd rather be in a spike mosh pit where people have lost teeth than mosh with Edward scissor hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Actually, I could see him in Guar. He'd like dice <laughs> up something. I could see him in Guar. I think it would work. But... Anyway, we have the episode queued up here. Let's see what's up with Edward. Hmm. Hey. You recognize those? Mm Mm-hmm. That's cool. Huh. Hmm. Rock showers. Yeah, that sounds shitty. Yeah. Nothing like get a concussion from going outside. Right. <laughs> he's our expert on the supernatural you mean you're in killing with of course so <laughs> yeah, he looks trustworthy <laughs> oh yeah what can't I tell you about them Tom there's definitely a message a secret message from beyond and they just put out an 8 million wool on the war for the hello 8 million dollars just like that he sounds like if Lon Chaney was mixed with Alex Jones yeah they're turning the darn satellites gay. I'm not the type to be led around by a woman. Then you'll have to lead her around. I'm even less the type to do that. Here we go. Now what do you know about hackers anyway? It might have been like that when you were young, but that was a long time ago. <clears throat> what are you trying to say, Jack, that I'm starting to get old like you? Well, you can't tell a woman baby by looking at her. Oh. Mm. <laughs> hey. Well, yeah. According to informed sources, the satellite is from an earlier era. The investigation has been delayed because the binary access codes are missing. Those computers became prime targets for hackers who sharpened their skills breaking the codes, thus creating a new breed of hacker with awesome powers. <laughs> And cuts over to Edward playing with a toy. <laughs> Damn. Radical Edward! Come out! It's Radical funny. Edward. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsies. These guys are just like, what the fuck? I'll inspect all of the transmitters <laughs> to see what kind of contact they have. I'll see if I can find out about the hackers working this area. Oh, hello. <laughs> Uh-oh. Aw. <laughs> Let 
Let's start with all the transmitters that are online right now. <laughs> yeah. That's not much help. No. Yeah, it's probably it, bro. He's a big mother, like maybe seven feet tall. We call him Gratitude Edward. The heck is the beautiful little music in the king. Edward's only three years old. A big of nature loves horrible franchise. He's an alien, that's what I heard. <laughs> That's the most believable theory I've heard so far. Super lonely AI out lost in space. What? Who are you? Huh? What? What did you just say? I am the central processing unit on the D-135 artificial satellite. That is short for Edward Wong Howe Pepeluk Ruski Report. That made it up, you know. <laughs> it's a long name. This thing? Yes, I do. Sort of. Well, at least I am. Shouldn't have given marshmallows to a dog. Hey. Well, they're more like chocolate peeps. Oh, okay. Oh, no. All you gotta do is just step in the batter's box and keep getting beamed and then you keep scoring. It's gonna hurt, but it works. Hey. <laughs> there you go. You really are Radical Edward, the one they talk about. Uh-huh. What have you heard? You're a seven-foot-tall basketball player with a whimsical yet beautiful uh, technique, and you're also an alien. You'll only have one chance. That's all I'm gonna need. Uh oh. Man, what a bolt. These missiles are curving off target. Oh, the cheap ones are worthless. Oh. 
And a deep fried brain. <laughs> Something about a promise? Some promises are made to be broken, in fact. Most of them are. Now come on, let's talk. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> You see it carved that face into the... <laughs> yep. Also, yeah, Faye discovered Ed's a girl. That's what I thought, but... Yeah. I also thought the uh, VT in the last one was a dude. Yeah. Uh, the voice was off, but I was like, that's clearly drawn to be like a man, right? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, ambiguous... Butch. Yeah, the ambiguous nature of it all, it gives off, it gives off, like, yeah, VT was was a dude, but then when you actually hear her talk about her husband, and you also hear her talk about, uh, you know, hear other people. Some people know that she's a woman, so they refer to her as her. Although there are other people who are unaware and refer to VT as he. Well, as soon as I heard the voice, I was like, okay, I'm hearing that's clearly a female voice actor, but why are they doing it on this butch looking dude? Ah, uh, okay. So the cat and everything, okay, it's probably a girl. Then, yeah, sure it was, enough. and it was. And uh, not only that, uh, she was the former wife of a famous bounty hunter. Right. And that's why she hated bounty hunters so much. Mm -hmm. Yep, because bounty hunting is what killed her husband. Mm -hmm. Ain't it Ain't it a bitch sometimes. This was pretty lighthearted. Oh, yeah. There's going to be episodes where... Good action yeah. sequence there in space, but the rest of it was just kind of... Well, there Funny. are episodes that are lighthearted. There's some episodes you're going to be... Actually, I think it's the next one. You're just going to be like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, that's how I was when I first watched it. Uh, but this one here, I mean, this one, a lot of... Like, you know, this is a hell of an introduction. It also introduces the lighthearted side that this show goes to sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's actually one episode that almost fo strictly follows the adventures of Ed and Ayn. Hmm. And, That's awesome, and it's and it's a hilarious episode. It, it actually pays homage in a lot of ways to a bunch of old seventies revenge films and black exploitation films. Oh my god! And it's and it's awesome. It's just so freaking cool. And uh, yeah, uh, it there's just a lot going with this show, and. That's what it benefits from being an anthology because in one episode you have the heart crushing loss of a very cool character, Rocco, and then in this one you have the introduction of probably the more laid back and lackadaisical character, Ed. Yeah, I like him. Her. Him, her. It, it, yeah. Them, I like they, them. Yeah. <laughs> I like her. Yeah. I like the child. No, yeah, that doesn't base. sound right either. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there, Andrew. Yeah, that's all Calm down, like, father. <laughs> Ed, Ed named Ed's self, made it up Ed's self, you know? Like, yeah. So yeah. Didn't really realize that Ed was basically usually a guy's name, I guess. Well, yeah. As weird as it sounds, I could kind of tell when they started doing like the feet thing, like where they were typing with their feet. I was like, you don't usually see dudes moving like that. And, like, was... Well, men are nowhere near as limber. Yeah. I'm, I've met some men who are limber like that, but not most of them. For no, some reason, that character kind of reminds me of Elmo. <laughs> so well, referring to re they're referring to the into the first per, into the uh, third the person, yeah, and the voice, I guess, and all. except the, except no, I'm not going to go there. I was going to say something. I always just kind regret. of assumed it was a girl there. because, despite the fact that oh. like a lot of the kids in like anime kind of sound that way, yes, like that's a pretty feminine sounding voice in terms mm -hmm. of like compared to some of the others. I was letting it go because I figured, you know, obviously they were a well, kid, so I figured it was supposed to be like 
Well, most of the Hot young, pitched, but... most of the young uh, kids in anime are voiced by women. Yeah, I mean, there's very few. I mean, there's um, like in My Hero Academia, it actually is pretty well distributed. Like a lot of the male characters are actually voiced by by men, with the exception of certain screams, which. I remember it always blew my mind when I realized Ash Ketchum was voiced by a lady. Oh, yeah. We yeah. actually met her, Veronica Taylor. Yeah, yeah we got nice to interview woman. her. Yeah. And it was uh, that was one of those moments where you were talking about, you know, where you're just like, I don't want to ask stupid questions right, right. now. Yeah. yeah. And she talked to us for like 15 minutes, right? Yeah. She just came over, just sat down. It was down, a long time. Talked with us, and, and it was really cool. It was really cool getting, you know, getting her, uh, her input on stuff. Yeah. Really sweet. How hey. crazy was that? pretty freaking crazy it doesn't dude. even seem real yeah no it doesn't and i love i love doing stuff like that i love interacting with people like that it's mm-hmm. like which i'm excited for fanboy expo because oh fanboy my god expo, that's gonna be crazy it's gonna be crazy steve bloom bruce campbell i mean holy crap Richard it's a... Dean anderson uh a bunch of yeah mick foley's gonna be there hmm. ah! I'm, I mean, I'm I'm gonna be in paradise. I'm just gonna walk in. I'm just gonna be like, yes, this is awesome. Bruce Campbell would be another one of those that I would be like, I don't want to say something stupid to him, but like, I don't know. I gotta just be like, man, dude, I hell yeah, you're an awesome guy, man. Well, yeah. well, well, actually, what what I would do just to met, just I'd be like, I was like, don't be so, don't don't be awkward, don't be awkward, don't be awkward. Your chin is magnificent, sir. <laughs> See, like, I want to just say something to him, but I know he's just heard it so much. I just want to be like, Bruce Campbell. Groovy, groovy, <laughs> yeah, groovy. I well, honestly, man. I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna say to him. I'd probably just say, "Answer me this: Was Ted Raimi really that sweaty on the set of Evil Dead 2? <laughs> he was, by the way. Actually, there was one part where you see like this uh, white fluid seeping out from the uh, from like the between the cracks of the of the skin in the char- in the character he's portraying. That wasn't water they added in. That was actually his sweat coming out through the through the cracks Yummy. of the suit. I was like, "Oh gosh, <laughs> D- don't do that, please." Yeah, that just made me fucking want to puke. Uh, well, yeah, and salty. Oh, shut God. up, Nick. Shut up. The fuck out of here. Get out of here. Jesus. But yeah, how super fun. Yeah, how lighthearted. Well, yeah, and it we we're with this we're given the final introduction to the to the last member of the Bebop crew. Hmm. Here we are performing for you. If you know the words, I don't want to get claimed that's by the, YouTube. That's a different crew. <laughs> it's like Bebop, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Ed's a pretty great character. Oh yes. Yeah. Ed, Ed, love I love the character, and also, you know, it, you, her interactions with the rest of the crew as the show goes on is honestly some of the funniest stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's some stuff between her and Faye where Faye is like really, you know, really hard edged and this and that, and Ed's really light hearted. It's a good comedic foil between the two. Like Ed's all of a sudden doing something, and she's like, "Faye, Faye, what are you doing?" And Faye's just like. How many times have I told you it's just Faye? <laughs> and then Ed's just like, Faye, Faye, why so mad? <laughs> and Faye's just like, uh, uh, just at that point, what's the what's the point in arguing? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> easier to let that one go. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Much easier. But this was a, but yeah, with this, the Bebop crew is now complete. And now the adventures can continue and the characters can grow. Also, don't believe Spike when he says he hates animals. I, I don't think know. he would have had a more negative reaction to having a cat on his head in the previous mm-hmm. episode. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think Spike just puts up that visage to not to get attached to anything, there. because I think he has a he has a kind heart. He just doesn't want to portray that. Mm, that's understandable. Yeah, Bounty obviously. hunter with a kind heart. I mean, uh, yeah, not to we, mention he saved Ayn from falling in the water originally when they oh, first yeah. found Ayn. Yeah, so. stray dog strut. Yeah, he just. He was like, "Damn it!" Mm. Yeah, he could have got the bounty. He could have just gone for the bounty, but yeah. but I could have got. If he really very hated animals. Hurt. I don't feel like he would have cared that much. Right? He kind of wants to be a hard ass in all yeah, areas. He's just but... on a tough guy, act on that. Yeah. One. yeah. And and I think I think you know we'll learn more about the characters as we go along, and we'll see 
you know, motives and everything and all that. But yeah, overall, I'm I'm glad y'all are still enjoying this. Of course, I'm glad that this is I'm glad that this is worked out so well, and everyone's everyone's all happy and hunky dory watching this, and I'm glad that. I'm glad we just haven't had someone just go, it's fucking bullshit, and just bolt <laughs> off the couch, and I'm just going to be like, well, this is over. Well, it is, <laughs> well, is kind of nice where it's not like one necessarily set storyline. Like you said, it's more like an anthology, mm. so it's yeah. refreshing every time you see a new episode because you're not like, oh, where did we leave off? It's you never like, really know what ah, you're going to get. What's this one about? Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah it, there, it's very... There's a lot of variation to the styles of storytelling involved in this, and... I enjoy it. Yes. Well, and there's also yeah, and there's also the uh, there's also uh, the Watanabe. Whenever he came up with the concept of this, uh, he was inspired uh, as by the title of the show uh, by jazz musicians, because no jazz musician session was ever one hundred percent the same. There were new right. players, new things, and jazz would always go off of so, like someone would start with like a saxophone solo. Just like start playing, and then all of a sudden the drums would come in and, and develop a rhythm uh, for it, and then the trumpet would come in. Maybe uh, you know, maybe the reeds would come in and start playing some stuff. Uh, and honestly, it just that's how Watanabe wanted it to be. He didn't want it to be a, he wanted remnants of a story, you know, like a, an antagonist, and maybe maybe every now and again we go back to an overarching story, but. It wouldn't be anything that you'd have to really pay attention to in previous episodes. Hmm. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty yeah. of how the storytelling works with this. Is that you don't have... It... <clears throat> uh, biggest, one of the big comparisons I can think of is uh, the rivalry between Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. They don't have to see each other for a long time. They know what's up. Right. They know what's up and you know, they're all, you know, it's just like it's, like it's familiar yet different. Right. And it's... It's it's awesome. That's why I love this show so much. That's why everyone who talks about this show, they're just like, this really belongs off in its own category. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely different. I mean, there's shonen, shojo, uh, sports anime, slice of life. Uh, uh, what's there's a hint. There's you know what we aren't supposed to talk about. <laughs> you, got, you got the first syllable. I know. In I know. I thought to myself, he dropped hey, a little. Should I say that? He dropped a little hint. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, of course, we have a category all its own: Cowboy Bebop. Mm. I mean, because I can't really think of any other show that's like this. It's got elements of almost everything. <clears throat> yes, it's, it's almost. Like... <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> almost, I wasn't yeah. the one who brought it up. I just I, got a poke I, at it. Hey, 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 hey! You I didn't say it. I didn't yeah. say it. <laughs> Don't be talking about those Cthulhu arms. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ball God. <laughs> there's Lovecraftian, then there's Lovecraftian. Yeah, <laughs> then, then there's the craft of love. <laughs> Either way, there's still <laughs> How do you want your tentacle? Horribly scary <laughs> or horribly satisfying? <laughs> As long as there's a bunch of them. Yeah, as long as there's a bunch of them. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's what happens at like 3 a.m. I gotta stop before I ruin H.P. Lovecraft for myself. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we went there. Ooh, I wonder what yes. the H.P. stands for. Um, Hewitt Packard? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Harry, God damn it, I know Harry this. Palms. Um... Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Palms Lovecraft. I want to say his first name's Herbert. Yeah, about Hubert P. Farnsworth? No. Don't think you got what I meant. No. <laughs> DP There's Lovecraft. There's H.P. Lovecraft, what? and what is H.P. Oh. Lovecraft? I like yours, D.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, that's DP pretty Lovecraft. good. <laughs> Howard Dr. Phillips Pepper Lovecraft. Lovecraft. Howard Phillips that. Lovecraft. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't... Oh, gosh. Now that you've said D.P. Lovecraft, it's like... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That would be a hell of a good one. Stop. Right? <laughs> DP Lovecraft presents It Came from it's... the Deep. <laughs> came Stop in the fucking deep. up cosmic horror for me, man. <laughs> cosmic horror? Co cosmic horror, yeah. D DP Lovecraft's Cosmic Horror. 
I'm gonna be thinking about that all night, DP Lovecraft. <laughs> Damn it! That's gonna have me cracking up all the oh, time, shit. man. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, this was this was Cowboy Bebop, uh, episode nine, jamming with Edward. We hope that you all enjoy, and we hope that uh, you will continue to join us with this. Even though hopefully we didn't run you off with our uh, with our humor. Scary. There. Horror. <laughs> We didn't scare you off there. So, yeah, keep tuning in, and uh, hopefully we will see you all in the next one. So until then, I'm Nate. And Drew. I'm Chad. Nick. It's twins are laughing, I bet, for God. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you later, Space Cowboy. <laughs>